All right, so I have here a freshly emerged female Ello Sphinx, Uranus Ello. It is actually a pretty common moth down here in South Florida. One of our more common Sphinx moths. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna open up the cup and give you a couple really clean images of the Ello Sphinx, all right? Um, the Ello Sphinx feeds on plants in the Euphorbaceae family. It's uh, actually, I've, I've, I've raised them on ficus, on fig. I've raised them on uh, poinsettia. I've raised them on a number of different plants and it's just a, a bug that eats a lot of different things down here in the in South Florida, in tropical South Florida. The plants that it feeds on are all toxic. They have milky sap. Uh, I don't believe that the moth is poisonous itself, uh, but I've actually never eaten one. So I have no idea. Uh, I'm assuming that it's not because I've seen plenty of birds eat them without any problem whatsoever. Uh, so, Cool bug, uh, this is a female. The males have a really dark colored streak on the forewing and uh, this one is actually really tiny in size and the reason that this one's super tiny is it, um, they get about twice the size. Uh, when I found it, it was feeding on a plant that I don't recognize. Any more? Oh wait, find them, find them first. Yeah, I lost it. Huh. Oh, I'll be there. I see you see him? Yeah. A little bit more. Oh, I got it. <sighs> I think it's an L. All right. No, it's not L. Let's it's see. It's a face moth, but I don't, know, I don't know which one. Let's see, guys. That's not poison uh, wood? It's not poison wood. Come on. What is that? Guys, I really it's don't. An it's an L. It's probably L. Yeah, I see the... The yeah, the Ello, the Ello's got the little Cyclops thing eye spot on the top. But you can see how they they just light up green. Well, an, an Ello that size, it shouldn't have the horn, right? No, the, the smaller instars have the horn. That's why. Yeah, it still has yep, the horn. He's still, he's, still on a, he's still got another instar to go. Oh, okay. Look at the blue butterfly that just landed on me. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this butterfly. Look at the yep. They weren't maybe so, the guys. Um, see how they glow? They do glow. So cool. They do glow. And that was, he was way up there. And we found him really, really easy with the UV light. Look how he just lights up. He's got like a two-tone purple and purple and green. Okay, so what do you think? We should probably let him go, huh? He's a little bit small. What do you think? I don't know. If, do you think we would... Uh, I don't have this plant. The one that I have, what is it called? The, um, the Christmas plants, I forgot. Poinsettia? Poinsettia. I don't know if they switch. Hmm. Look how cool he is. He's got the little cyclops eye on his upper yeah. thorax. Let's do it. And what we can do is I can take another snip. Where's that tree? Okay. Yeah, okay, Sphinx moth caterpillar number one in the pot. Hello, Sphinx. I believe. <laughs> I believe. I believe. You know? And we found it in fourth instar. And what I did was I cut some plant and brought it home with me, but it wasn't quite enough of the plant to get it through its life cycle. So I switched it onto a plant that I felt that I knew that, it, that I've raised them on before. And here's what happened, guys. The caterpillar just refused to eat. And that happens when you try to switch. A lot of times when you try to switch a caterpillar from one host plant to the other in the middle of its life cycle, uh, the caterpillar doesn't like to switch host plants. And some, some caterpillars do, some aren't picky, but most caterpillars, even though they will, if their eggs are laid on, let's say poinsettia, it'll feed on poinsettia. If they're laid on papaya, it'll feed on papaya. But if you're laid on papaya, the caterpillar feeds, and then halfway through, you take it off the papaya plant and put it onto a poinsettia, uh, or, or ficus, they, they don't like to switch over to a new food. So that's what I tried to do just because I didn't have the, any more of the original food that I, 
I didn't pluck enough uh, leaves. And what he did was he stopped eating. And he walked around the container for about two days uh, before he pupated. And then he pupated really, really tiny. So uh, that's what happens when you see a really stunted individual uh, insect in nature. It was probably because of a lack of food in the larval or immature stages. So um, I wanna show you some of the cool features about this moth, but in order to do that, I need to like play around with her a little bit, see if I can get her to open her wings. And I don't know how she's gonna react. So let me see if she'll crawl into my finger here. Let's see. Usually they'll, usually they'll crawl up onto your finger. Uh oh, uh oh, come on, come on, there we go, uh oh, oh boy, all right, well, anyway, look at how cool that bug is, it's got these bright red hind wings, and the, the abdomen has got that really cool looking, uh, the abdomen's got that really cool looking like spinal column with the rib cage uh, there. And it is just a really, really neat bug. In fact, I remember the first time I ever saw an Ello Sphinx. Okay, there we go, there we go. All right, she's warming her jets now. She's getting ready to fly. But I remember the first time I ever saw an Ello Sphinx it was, I had a male papaya tree in my house growing up at my parents' house. And I used to look for sphinx moths that came in to nectar on the male flowers at twilight. And it was, it was cool because I saw a lot of cool things. Like I saw the papaya sphinx, I saw the morning sphinx, I saw the obscure sphinx. But then one day I saw one with this bright red hind wings. And sure enough, it, it was an Ello Sphinx. It was the first time. I was probably 11 years old. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I've always loved that moth ever since. Even though there's times in the Keys where I can see a, a ton of these in a day. I just have that fond memory when I was a kid. Uh, let's see. Let me take a snap of picture there. 